I'm wearing, I'm wearing the boy, I'm wearing the man himself, the man, the myth, the legend, Husk. Gotta show respect, gotta show respect to one of the best characters in this, this goddamn show. Welcome to the Has Been Hotel. Can I help you with anything? What is going on, guys? My name is Funky Tom, and today I am going to be reviewing Has Been Hotel. Yes, yes, the show that the world has been waiting for for four years. It is finally upon us, and all of season one has been released. And I'm here today to give my honest opinions about it, and I'm going to be talking about three major pointers in this video. I'm going to be talking about the characters, I'm going to be talking about the story, and I'm going to be talking about the main appeal to it, the music. I'm going to leave the animation, I, I'm going to leave my thoughts about the animation and stuff out, because I'm not an animator. I only draw with a pencil, so I can't have much of a say in it. But let's just say the animation is fucking beautiful let's get that out of the way and let's move on to my main pointers about this video so first i want to get into the story of has been hotel the storyline in this show feels a little all over the place but it does follow a cohesive story it does follow a cohesive story with charlie trying to open the hotel and everyone trying to help and further along in the series obviously when everyone hears about this everyone thinks it's stupid as hell like Ugh, this this girl in hell is a princess of hell thinks she can redeem people Psh, bullshit but as the but as the hotel goes on and as more people get into it and as more people start to realize wait a minute this might actually be good for us because it helps us build a community and it helps us feel good because it's a break. The hotel is quite literally a break from their god awful reality. Now, keep in mind, there is still like a hundred different stories going on in just this one season. There is so much more that we have to get into and I am super excited for season two. Now, I was really shocked to find out that some people actually think that this is the end of the show. Like, oh, it's only gonna be one season and, there's, and then that's it. I'm like, guys, we have so many things that ha or have been mentioned in the first season that have not even been touched on. Alistair being held down by a mysterious being, a mysterious overlord that for some reason has his soul tethered down. Huss being tethered down to, uh, to Alistair. Like, we, like, who are these other characters? Why, why is Valentino so abusive? What is the meaning behind Vox and Alistair's beef? Where did Adam go? And, again, this uh, I'm going to put a disclaimer on the beginning of the screen. This video is going to contain major spoilers. Why is Lilith in heaven and Lucifer not? There's so much more that we have to delve into with this show that I knew for a fact there's no way this is going to be the only season. I'm like, guys, there's so much more to come. There's so much more story that we haven't delved into. There's so much things to get into we need because we want to we want to see angel stand up for himself we want to see husk father angel which side note a lot of people here, here's my ultimate theory a lot of people think that like husker dust is going to be a thing oh they like each other i don't know i i'm kind of mixed like it would be cute to see them be together husk and angel dust but at the same time husk doesn't really strike me as gay he doesn't strike me as the type of guy to like men. It feels more like a father figure, if I gotta be honest. He feels more like a father figure to Angel, just the way he compliments him, like, way to go, kid. Like, that's that's something a dad would say to their child. It's really, it's cute. It's a little cute, like, father-son dynamic, because Angie needs someone in his life to tell him, you don't gotta decimate yourself. You don't gotta throw away your dignity to feel special, as we hear in the most popular song, Loser Baby, which I cannot share because, you know, copyright. But another thing I want to delve into is why Heaven was so adamant about demons not being redeemed. As you guys saw in episode six, despite the fact that both Adam, Sarah, Emily, and the entire council saw that yes, demons can change, they can be redeemed, they can have redeemable qualities, they were very quick to just say, uh, yeah, no, no, they can't, uh, get the fuck out of my court. They don't want to accept the fact that they can't. There's, they're, they don't want any outsiders in their community. They don't want any new souls. They, they want to stick to, oh, only good, pure souls that got here from when they died. We don't want any dirty, rotten filth in our heavenly quarters. And right at the end, when Serpentius died and got redeemed, that was when I think Sarah realized, oh shit, it can happen. 
demons can be redeemed. Also, another side note that I didn't mention in this video, just take a look at Sarah's face when she realizes that demons can be redeemed. That is a face of her realizing, oh fuck, I was wrong, and they can be redeemed. I was just bullshitting because I wanted to go off of what everyone else was saying, but now that I know demons can be redeemed, oh no. This isn't good. Now, in all fairness, Emily was more happy about it because she's like, oh my God, it can't happen. And Sarah had more of the, oh my God, it can happen type of reaction. So that is going to definitely be way more touched on in the coming future. And I know it for a fact. And just the entire series, Sir Pinch was just, was, just, was just so cute. I loved him so much. He was so cute. He was so adorable. He was so sweet. I loved him so much. One of the other things I'm really glad they didn't do too much was delve too much into these deep personal relationships between the characters. They more so focused on the characters trying their best to be redeemed and their lives. They more so focused on like what Angie does for a living, Husk's reason for being this grumpy old bartender. Nifty, I don't trust Nifty. I don't trust Alistair either. I mean, he's always smiling, but you know, he, he didn't want to smile. But as we saw in one little like smidgen of a frame, it's almost like he's, his smile is stitched. He's forced to smile despite everything. You know, there's so much more story that we can delve into here. And again, this is only the first season. I actually was gonna make this video about a week ago, but then two more episodes got announced and released. So I'm like, oh shit. Let me wait, because I saw people already coming out with their reviews when the first four episodes dropped. I'm like, guys, wait for the whole season to be over. Jesus Christ. People cannot wait with shit like this. People cannot accept the fact that, like, what I don't like personally about, like, things things in general is like the second something gets released everyone instantly thinks yep everyone's seen this now we can make reviews about it we can put spoilers on tiktok dog some people do not have access to amazon prime video some people don't have the money to pay for it some people don't have the time to pay for it some people cannot act some people still don't have the internet in this day and age shockingly enough because you know poor people still exist people but you know there's just so much more story to delve into and i feel like a lot of people made their reviews way too fucking early i'm like guys wait until the full season is released please now we have full stories to go off of you know and again like i said more stuff to get into we have who the hell is Rosie? I, first of all, I fucking love Rosie. She's one of my top five characters. We'll get into that a little bit later. And as you guys saw in episode five, I'm pretty sure that Lucifer did not intend to be a bad father. He tried, he tried so hard to be a good dad. Guys, with his song, his song when he's carrying Charlie, and then Lilith takes her away. That that That's gonna be delved into a lot more. And again, literally the last character we see in this season is Lilith. There is so much more of her character to delve into. Why is she in heaven? Why did she not think that Lucifer was a good dad? Why was she so controlling? Why did she want Charlie all to herself? And I am personally so excited to get more into the story. I want to see where this goes and I want to see more of Serpentius. He got redeemed. <laughs> it was so I was like, and, and uh, that was one thing that a lot of people were giving him shit, were giving Viv shit for. Oh, his death was so quick and easy. He could have had a really cool battle action scene. First of all, he did. And second of all, let's be honest. Did we really want to see Sir Pentius getting like gutted or like stabbed brutally? Like how Nifty stabbed Adam? Let's be honest. Did any of us want to see that? I really don't think so. On the bright side, his death was quick and painless and end of story. I'm more happy that it was quick and painless as opposed to a slow, painful one like Adam had okay let's be happy that he got redeemed and that he didn't die a gruesome death none of us wanted to see none of us wanted to see little serpent just die like that he was so cute he loved he was such a sweetheart I absolutely loved him and his little crush on cherry was so cute that was like that was a completely unexpected thing because in the pilot they're mortal enemies yet in the series he has a little crush on her it was so cute I love he he's not strong he, he's just he's just goofy he's just goofy up in the head and like he was working, he was, uh, he tried to work for Vox Tech, but he's just too careless. So it didn't end up working out, but yeah, that's my thoughts on, that's my thoughts on the story. Now let's get into the music. So I'm going to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of musicals. In fact, I actually do not care for musicals, but I tried to go into this show with the perspective of someone who doesn't like musicals because I wasn't just gonna immediately start falling in love with the songs like I'm like oh it's Husband Hotel I gotta love everything about it no I wanted to actually give it a fair chance so I went into it blind I went into it expecting 
like just song after song after song. And if I'm gonna be brutally honest, the songs were a whole lot better than I thought they were gonna be. If I had to pick my top three, it would definitely be Loser Baby, obviously, Poison, obviously, and Lu oh, I can't remember the name of it now, but I'll put it up on screen, Lucifer's Song. I love that one. That one is so upbeat. Although Mimsy can get her snarky ass out of that song. She did not need to. There's a lot that the Has Been Hotel fandom disagrees on and agrees on. But if there's one thing we all collectively came together on, it's that Mimsy could get the fuck out of that song. She, like, it's me. No, it's me. I, it's, you've been waiting for. No, I don't. I, I've not been waiting for this. I don't know who the fuck you are. Get, get your ass out of my song and let Lucifer finish it. But yes, the songs were a whole lot better than I thought. And I gotta be honest, when I first went in, into it, it wasn't very promising because the first song of the series is Charlie literally interrupting her girlfriend to start singing. Can you imagine like just having a disagreement with your friend? Like, hey man, I, I know you want Del Taco, but we all kind of agree on Taco Bell. And then your friend just bursts into song, I want Del Taco. Why can't it? Like, can, like that's, that's not, mm, mm, and that, no, I don't like, I've never liked that idea of just randomly bursting out and just it just feels so unnatural and it doesn't like add any cohesiveness to the plot like i don't think that song was meant to fit right there it kind of happens abruptly the song itself is mid again it's the first song of the series that was more like that was probably just like a test song to like warm people up like hey this is gonna be a musical, which, be honest, I'm being honest, I was really surprised that this is the direction they went for Has Been Hotel. Like, I understand Hell of a Boss has some good songs in it, and like, half the cast is Broadway performers, and Viv herself has confirmed she very much loves Broadway musicals, live musicals, theater, stuff like that, which are mostly musicals. So, you know, again, it's her series, she can do what she wants with it, and the musical aspect was a bit surprising, despite the show premise, but at the same time, some of the songs slap so hard some of the songs like legit give me chills like the one with alistair and vox duet and the one with camilla oh my god those songs are those songs go hard as hell i wish i could play them but i don't want i want this video to make money so you guys are just gonna have to listen to them to, on your own they are so good i the songs are all pretty much free on youtube to listen to so you're free to listen to them however you want, wherever you want. If you need Amazon Prime Video, you get a 30-day free trial if you sign up. I sound like one big hashtag ad. I promise this isn't sponsored. But overall, I would personally give the music all combined together with both the good and bad songs. Middle of the road, I'd say a good 7 out of 10. Again, that's from the perspective of someone who doesn't like musicals. But I personally enjoyed a, a decent amount of the songs in this show. Like, some of them were kind of quick. Some of them were kind of forgettable. Some of them were kind of meh. But, oh my god. Some of the best songs come from the, from the bad guys. Like, it, it's bad, but some of the best songs come from the bad guys. Like, hell is forever. Whether you like it or not. That's a good one. You can hear Alex Brightman's Fizzarali voice come out. Despite the fact that he's voicing uh, Adam. And what's funny is that Alex Brightman voices, like, 50 different characters in this show. It's actually quite funny. It's actually quite entertaining. I, I very much did it in the enjoy that so yeah i'm giving the music a good 7 out of 10 the story i'm giving a good like 8 out of 10 so there's that and finally we're gonna get on to the characters let's be brutally honest the characters are the main appeal to this show without the characters there would be there would be like the, without the, the charming looking and feeling characters there would be no has been hotel there would be no success behind this show it's just the way the characters look act and talk is so good charlie and vaggie's relationship is so cute angie finally was able to stand up for himself because of husk and f first of all shout out to the main man husk voiced by keith david i honestly feel like through the full the four years that has been hotel wasn't even thought of because viv was busy with hell of a boss this is what she was doing she was making has been hotel and through those years oh my god I, first of all i am happy that they gave like i am happy with a couple of the voices also brandon rogers needs to get out of katie killjoy's voice that's that does not fit at all it's no i don't like it i don't like it i don't like brandon as katie it's not good but i i gotta be honest when i first heard husk's voice i didn't really care for it because i'm like oh man i missed that raspy are you shitting me type of voice but it has grown on me because again it's a musical and they want musical singers in the show and having keith david as husk honestly 
it's grown on me. It's still not my favorite, but it has definitely grown on me now that I've watched all of season one. Husk is such a favorite now, and I absolutely adore that because, again, through the four years that Has Been Hotel was being made, literally everyone forgot about it. Everyone was all over Hell of a Lost, all over the new characters and everything like that. And now that Has Been Hotel is back, not only is Husk not just a side character, but he's one of the favorites now. He's such like a father figure to everyone who needs to hear that, despite being a drunk bartender. It's so cute. Angie needed someone like him to let him know you don't have to throw away your dignity to feel special. You are able to be whatever you want. And it may be hell and you may have signed a contract, but you need to stand up for yourself from time to time. Dude, Angie, you got a boss that physically, emotionally, and sexually abuses you. So you need to start standing up for yourself. You need, and he needed that father figure husk in his life to tell him that. As for people like Nifty, I don't, <laughs> Nifty's, just like how Hus said, you don't even want to know what the fuck's wrong with her. She's, um, interesting. She's an interesting one, to say the least. Alistair. This man has secrets. A lot of them. And he hides them all through his smile. You can totally tell in certain moments of the show, this man did not want to smile. This man was, like, on the verge of cracking. But he is forced into that smile. The V's? Ugh. I, okay, first of all, no one likes Valentino. Velvet? I don't know. I don't really care. I, it, burn me at the stake if you must. I don't care for Velvet's voice. I did not expect her to be British. I expected her to be more like this bratty little American teen chick type vibe. But she's more like this. That was really surprising if I gotta be honest. It was really surprising that they, they took her into this direction of like, oh, she works for the V. She's not just some like punk teenager who like hangs out with them, which is how she was perceived in the pilot. It was really interesting to see that they went in the direction of like, oh yeah, she speaks for them when they can't be here. And she's a real businesswoman with a British voice. Like I don't really care for the British voice. But I was really surprised that they took that direction of her being more of a serious businesswoman as opposed to just some, oh, yay, like their social media guru, you know? Like every every popular person that I know nowadays on the internet, like Vox, has a social media like manager to manage all their shit. And I, was, I thought that that was going to be her role. And she kind of is, but she more like works with them, not for them, you know? She gives off the vibe, if you guys know what I mean, she gives off the vibe of working with them and not for them, which I personally feel her character would have benefited more if they did the opposite. I'm not one to judge, no, I am, literally am judging. <laughs> it's Viv's series, this is her story, she can do what she wants with it, but again, this is all just my personal opinions on the characters and stuff like that. And can we please get into one of the most unexpectedly amazing characters on this show? Rosie. Oh my god, I am in love with not just her design, but her character and her voice. It's so cute. She has that like New Yorker accent. It's so adorable. Her little hollow eyes are so cute. Her toothy grin is untrustworthy, but it's still, it still adds to her charm. She's so cute. Her little like 1950 style-esque design is adorable. Can we just talk about the fact that despite all this, she's a literal cannibal? That is quite admirable. I think that, I think that that is adorable. I don't know what, I, I don't know. I'm a weird guy, obviously, but I, I don't know. I just love her so much. She literally, like, I had a top five list of characters and then she jumped to number two. She took out my number two spot, knocked them down to number three, knocked all of them down. Like seriously, Rosie is such a sweetheart despite we only, and she's, she gives off, like she literally says, tell auntie Rosie what you need. She gives off those fun anti vibes, auntie vibes. I say auntie, I don't know why I said auntie. She literally gives off those like, oh, fun auntie to be around, you know? You could hang out with her, you could go out to lunch with her. I mean, she may serve you a foot, but you know what? Y you'll have fun, it's gonna be fun. Oh my God, it she's such a sweetheart. I love her so much and she was more than willing to let Charlie have everyone in her town fight with her. And that not even for her, fight with her. It was so cute. And Susan, Su of course her name was Susan. I'm surprised they did not name her Karen. Oh, I love that. Now, a lot of people pointed out with, like, Rosie, like, oh, she's always smiling like Alistair. But in certain scenes, you can see her not smiling. So she is definitely not tethered down to the same person that Alistair is because Alistair's constantly smiling no matter what. There's times where you see Rosie not smile. You know who I don't think I've brought up a lot in this video, actually? Cherry Bomb. 
Cherry Bomb being British was the surprise of the century. I did not expect her to be British because her singing voice was not British. That was funny. I was like, oh my God. But honestly, I like her British voice more than Velvet's. And it, like, I don't, I don't know. I feel like it fits her a little bit better. The British accent, the, the yeah, bitch, I'm trying to fight. You know, it's, it's, I, I don't know. I feel like that fits her a little bit more. Her character was very underdeveloped. Her, she like gives off those like reckless friend vibes. While Angie was trying to tend to Nifty, knowing damn well that Nifty's not used to this type of lifestyle, Cherry's just like, oh, you don't need to worry about her. She's fine. And Angie's like, no, she's not fine. She, she's stealing bleach. She thinks she needs to clean, bro. We're at a nightclub. You don't need to clean. But yeah, Nifty was one of those characters that I did not expect to like, but all of a sudden I randomly did like. I'm like, yo, she's so cute. The way she seizes up when she sees the camera is fucking adorable. And I feel like, you know, Cherry's character, other than being Serpentius's rival and his crush, I don't know. I feel like that could have been a little, uh, played a little bit better. But at the same time, She's just, she's just badass. She's a, she's a warrior. She's a fighter. She's one of those like psycho girlfriends that like, if you don't, if you don't deal with properly, she will, will rip your head off. But she's also really nice. She's really fun to be around. And that's, that's, that's really charming. God, there's so many characters that I've, I keep talking about. Camilla, my God, dude. Like she was already kind of like badass. Like, I, I don't know why her hands are so big. Don't ask me. Like, I do not know it's a weird design choice and could be improved a little bit but the second she took her hair down i'm like damn she a baddie and she can i mean i know she has two songs but she can sing dog she's fucking wow she's like teaching baggy you know hey you you gotta be prepared for this shit because they will attack you from behind from the left from the right from underneath even these guys will attack you you don't, you are not prepared. I'm trying to prepare you. And now I'm gonna sing a song and look as sexy as possible despite being an older woman. <laughs> I'm gonna get terminated off the platform, I know it. And then we can get into like the heaven characters. Adam is intentional. Now, okay, here's my main gripes with Adam. I feel like they intentionally made him very unlikable. And I understand that that's how he's supposed to be. He is supposed to be very unlikable. But I feel like they tried a little too hard to make it clear that this guy is supposed to be unlikable. Like, at a certain point, we understand. He doesn't need to drop 50 cuss words in one sentence for us to understand that he is a bad guy. Like, I do understand that Viv intentionally creates her characters, especially the ones that are supposed to be disliked, to cuss a lot. And I'm not gonna go on record and say, ooh, the cussing is a little too much. Can you tone down on the cussing a bit? Like y'all ever seen those memes where it's like such and such if it was made by Bigsy Pop? <laughs> It's quite funny, but you know, I intentionally feel like she does that to a lot of the unlikable characters, just so that way we know we are supposed to not like them. Unfortunately, if you have to do that with your characters to make them unlikable, chances are you may need to write them a bit better because if the only trait they have going for them being unlikable is just them cussing like crazy then maybe write them a little better now i'm not saying that adam wasn't written terribly maybe a little better could have improved his, his unlikability but this man i love that this man was dropping f-bombs and s-bombs all over the place shit fuck dick you know all these words and yet charlie cusses once and the entire court looks at her like she just like she just ate someone. Like I'm like, Adam was dropping f bombs two, 20 seconds ago. Like every other word that came out of his mouth was either fuck or shit. And Charlie cusses once, and you all look at her like she committed a cardinal sin. I know she's in hell, but that's besides the point. So overall, I do feel like Adam's unlikability could be written better. As for his motives and like why he does this shit, he's just a dick. You know, he's just like oh, he's one of those like. Oh, we don't want new people. We want to keep heaven pure and having you demons redeem yourself would just like ruin that like purality. Is that even a word? I don't even think that's a word. I didn't script this video. So there's that. But yeah, I do. And loot, uh, loot was just a sidekick. Loot, I love the little, uh, the angel masks that they wear that look like they're stitched. I love those so much. They look freaky as hell and they're badass and I love it so much. And yeah, I literally think that's all the characters that I can and have to talk about today. So yeah, in conclusion, I like Has Been Hotel. And I, I again, this is just my personal opinions on season one. I'm not gonna judge a show in its entirety 
because there's only one season. How can I judge a show properly if there's only one season? There is so much more to come. There's so much more story to get into. So many more characters that I guarantee you are going to be introduced. And, you know, I, I'm just not one to properly judge it unless there's more to go off of. And, and we only have season one. We literally have more to come. So stay tuned for the future because there's going to be plenty more has been hotel reviews there's gonna be plenty more things i'm gonna do with it and oh there's so much content to be made with has been hotel i absolutely love it but with that being said guys hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and i'm pretty sure you guys have seen a million like this before but as you guys know i'm a big has been hotel and hell of a boss fan and on another little side note i'm sorry but as much as i love has been hotel and hell of a boss i do whatever i can to disassociate myself from the fandom because despite as big of a fan as i am of this show i mean obviously look at my pin board but despite being as big of a fan as i know i am i really try to disassociate from the fandom online as much as possible because has been hotel has easily one of the most toxic online fan bases i have ever seen and that is very and that is putting it very lightly because i've seen some very toxic fan bases on this on this platform there are some games that i used to be into that i will never say i'm a part of a fandom of because one it's embarrassing and two the the toxicity and the awful things that go on behind the fandom are just horrendous so as much as i love this show the only time i will interact with the fandom is all two conventions i go to in my lifetime so if i saw you at anime pasadena you were cool but just know that i don't associate myself with the fandom online it's i try to stay away from that the only thing i do online is save images on pinterest <laughs> so take that as you will but with that being said guys hope you all enjoyed this review make sure to go and like comment and subscribe down below check out the gaming channel i got a gaming channel now for those of you that don't know we just hit 100 subscribers so thank you i've got more content coming to that i want to focus on that a lot this year and yeah what did you guys think of has been hotel let me know in the comments down below i love you guys and i'm gonna see y'all in the next video pokey tom is out stay awesome guys